Just fill, hey, fill it out and put my name on it, you know. <laughs> sure. <laughs> States of America, and the Republic, which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. Here. 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 Thank you, Here. 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 So if anyone is uh, online, or not, but... I have unmuted everyone. Huh? I've unmuted any everybody. Okay. So if anybody wants to ask you, I'll ask you. Okay. So yeah, if anyone wants to speak now, is your time under the audience of citizens. Is there anyone out there? Any alien life forms that we communicate with as well? Not a space. Uh, those citizens are available. Okay. And once, twice, three times. Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, close our audience of citizens and move on to our meeting agenda. We'll start with our consent agenda. Right. Items. May I, if I oh, may? Yes. I have muted everyone, including um, Peter. You'll have to unmute yourself. All right, but I've muted everybody so that there's no background noise. Great, thank you. Sorry. No, that's good. Appreciate that. Um, consent agenda: two items. Accept monetary donations totaling five hundred dollars for the Berlin Memorial Library uh, for purchase books and press twenty twenty one. Approve to sell food beverages and merchandise at school events. Twenty twenty one. So, I have those two consent items. A motion. Sure, I'll make a motion to accept the two consent agenda items. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other comments or questions? Maybe none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. Thank you. So now we are on to our public hearing that was continued from last time. Um, and the purpose uh, was to discuss and to continue to discuss uh, its exemption and property lease to charitable, religious, or nonprofit organizations pursuant to Connecticut. Gave a personal property lease to a charitable, religious, or nonprofit organization. Uh, so we we're going to pass an ordinance. I mean, that, that is, of course, the state regulation and. Uh, we were going to pass an ordinance that would make it a little clearer for the town to uh, handle this particular exemption. Um, it's something that someone would apply for, obviously, if they wanted to be exempt 
under this ordinance and under the state statute. Um, and I know, well, should just, we just, just a little bit more facts and what, and, you know, I'm just asking for that. Maybe I'll sum up too. Um, what did you uh, determine? Yeah, so what we've done is we reached out to CCM and they had all the uh, towns that had adopted the ordinance and their language, and they were able to, you know, give us actually what's in their ordinance. And, and these are towns from Manchester, West Haven, Stonington, Bridgeport, Danbury, New Britain, Stamford, Waterford. It's in your package. Yeah. Um, so you can probably get a fair public North 12 81, section 58, and, um, and Durham. I forgot to mention that. And then our assistant Joe Ferraro also called around, and you know he, uh, he the Britain adopted the ordinance, but not uh, with this field the field moving to the They have not. And so, and then we also asked the question if uh, you know they saw it's not scientific, obviously. Uh, if they saw an increase, in a lot of people taking property off the um, tax. Some of them are saying that. No. And I also spoke with the uh, you know corporation council afterwards to get some advice because you know he was close to some of these towns. And uh, uh, what his uh, advice, same thing that you mentioned, it is not automatic. There's a process to go through where you apply to the assessor, you go and actually make a visit. And if, if they're using only 20% of the space for the taxes in purpose. But they're going to get the exemption only for the 20 percent um and also you know this is when, it, when somebody's leasing the property if, if a church buys land they come up they have they own the church they are exempt anyway right uh, same with the considering the town of berlin i mean it's highly unlikely that a private school or, or a church might um, move into somebody's house or, or a business and ask for an exemption. I doubt it. Um, so, I mean, my recommendation, I would have if uh, Jeff wants to add anything, is to adopt this ordinance uh, since we have checks and balances and the code. It's not automatic, but it goes through a process. And then, you know, I mean, Joe's really good at these things uh, on the technical part of uh, determining what it is. Than what is not. And so I feel comfortable adopting this ordinance. Um, the council, yeah, if you want Thank to add anything, yeah. you have to unmute. Can you unmute, please? Oh, hold on. You might have to unmute. Yeah, yeah. So, as Arosh indicated, there would be an application process. Uh, Joe would develop and we can work with him. There's a Connecticut Assessors Association has. Uh, an exemption application that a lot of towns use, but I can work with Joe on developing an application. He'd be able to obtain a copy of the lease and make sure that the portion of the property for which the exemption is being claimed is used exclusively, which is the language in the statute, used exclusively for that purpose, whether it's charitable, nonprofit, or religious, so that the mission of the religious, charitable, or nonprofit organization is what is intended to be uh, covered under the exemption in 12-8158. And uh, it's not an automatic exemption. There's a vetting process that would include an application and Joe would have the opportunity to obtain information that he needs in order to be satisfied that the uh, language of the ordinance is applicable. Okay. Um yeah. So is it still a continued public hearing? I don't know if there's any members of the Park Town Council their comments. Uh, if any, uh, the public certainly has a, uh, if anyone is out there uh, wants to speak up on this issue, we still are in public hearing. So is anyone out there? Speak up. Uh, this is Chris, Economic Development Director. Um, just wanted to mention the fact that this is an opportunity get a group into town or to grow town that might benefit our citizens. I think it's important that we have the application process where it's not automatic. I think it's nice to have this opportunity to be able to provide this and give the council and the town oversight of it, but I think it's a positive thing to do. Thank you. Thank you. Chris. Anyone else? 
Anyone else? Mayor, I'm going to unmute everybody so that I believe that Attorney Pentor is sure. in the audience. Uh, yes, yeah, Mayor, members of the, of the council, Rick Pentor here. Uh, so I actually proposed this on behalf of the Moreland Hill School because when the school ceased operation, it uh, it had gone back on the tax rolls. We're still working with IMCA um, to work out some kind of an arrangement with the Y, but since the ordinance was proposed, we ran into the uh, COVID-19 issue and it's kind of put everything back. Uh, there was some talk about trying to use this ordinance to, uh, in case the Y was going to lease the property. We don't know if that's going to be necessary or not, but we certainly uh, would like to have a toolbox if, in, in case that uh, that still came about. We're still working with the Y in terms of uh, trying to take the property over, but there's been a setback because of the coronavirus and the, um, the loss of the Y's uh, daycare enrollment, which is a large source of their cash flow right now. Uh, but we do, uh, we would like to see this pass. I think it, uh, it it gives an option for the school, at least if it's leased to a nonprofit, at least we wouldn't be taxed uh, on the property. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anybody, anyone else from the public? Okay, hearing none, we'll go ahead. So uh, town council, uh, I appreciate all the info, input. Everyone, uh, Chris, uh, Mr. Pentor. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm just, just out of curiosity, sort of the ordinance, but um, you know why Newington and Mothersfield and Rocky Hill didn't adopt it, or are they still in research? Are they just you know, bigger, you know, because they're bigger towns? They decided not to. Yeah. I mean, this is our speculation. I can probably add if the ordinance needs to be adopted. I might. I'm guessing. There was no need that nobody asked for it. Okay. So they did adopt them. And it's, it's just, yeah, it's just like what we were. Uh, right? Yeah. So uh, unless you have any insight, uh, Jeff, as to why it's adopted. Yeah, I don't know. To do it on a site by site basis, which puts an enormous amount in some larger municipalities on the legislative body. Other municipalities do it the way that I think it's intended to be done in the statute, which is either adopt the ordinance. And, but most, most often it comes up and it leads to this discussion and an, an ordinance being adopted. So, you know, in Berlin, it hasn't come up before, I guess, but like Arosh said, usually the trigger is a specific property or a specific potential uh, lessee coming forth and asking for the opportunity to invoke the exemption. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, so, yeah, as I was saying, um, obviously it came up for the Moreland Hill School and we know it was specific, but obviously we do for one, we do for all. So, you know, Santa, I think it was worthwhile to get some more information, some more comments and uh, what other towns have done and how it might affect our tax rolls and, and the town in general. So that's why I waited for the weeks. But if it doesn't happen, it's not, uh, I think, you know, I'm sure I think we're all comfortable we can close the public hearing, but any other comments from the council? Okay. So, okay. so we'll go ahead and close the public hearing at this time. Eight seven sixteen. All right, and we will go on to our agenda. New business. New business is uh, to adopt this ordinance based on the conversation that we have had and after the after the and properties are leased. For charitable, religious, or nonprofit organizations, they'll be exempt from property taxes. That's for your consideration. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you, Rose, for you know, all the additional information you gathered and talking to us. Excuse me, Town Assessor. So, at this point, we've discussed it for a couple of council meetings, and I'm going to take a 
motion. Okay, yeah. move to adopt the ordinance, which allows exemption from the taxation of real or personal property. Property is leased to a charitable, religious, or nonprofit organization. Thank you, sir. Second. I second the motion. Thank you. Any further comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Peter. Uh, any opposed? So moved. So number two is uh, we had a request from the chair for people and housing authority to extend the option for night to Columbus property. And the reason for that is, I believe Joe's on the line, I'll have him speak, um, that he believes based on um, the new QAP that has come out for 2020, there is a, a very good chance that would get the 9% tax credit, which will allow him to um, manage at least about 60% of the total part. And so the, the deadline for applying to CHFA is in November. The current option runs out in the July, and uh, Joe has asked for an extension. When we spoke, he said he would prefer to have this extension um, until January of 2021, because uh, application goes in September, the results will be out uh, by January by the CHFA. And having said that, Joe, I believe you're on the line. Would you like to uh, speak, please? I am. Just to uh, clar clarify a couple of deadlines there. The November, November of 2020 is the deadline for the application. Uh, they announce the announce awards in March. So we'll know by March, maybe before then, if we've been awarded or if we're on track to get awarded. Um, so anyways, getting back to where to start this whole process. So as you know, we're under an option agreement uh, that expires at the end of this month. Um, I touched on these issues briefly last council meeting. Uh, so I'm here again to request an extension of the option agreement. Um, I have my contractors ready to go. We've had informal uh, conversations with the DOH. Uh, provided that this extension is granted, we will formalize our discussions with DOH. Our contractors will move forward on preparing the uh, application. And we'll file the application in November. Um, and I guess that's the plan at this point in time. If you have any questions or additional information i'm more than happy to uh answer so so joe i know we we sense a, a change and there was some i guess language to, to that effect or possible language from the state um we, so if we do this we're gonna the application is going to be senior affordable housing right that's correct okay. and we obviously, uh, the, the thing we want to attain is the 9% tax credit. We know that makes the financing much easier and we get that done. And, and that's and, and that's based on a point system, right? So we, we think that the points under a little bit different, maybe a little bit easing of the rules of senior affordable now from uh, the lot administration, we would be able to attain that. Well, the points actually deals with the state of Connecticut, not the federal government, so it's the Malloy administration and the Lamont administration. Uh, under Lamont, they've added some language. The point system remains the same. So under the point system, we would not qualify. However, they've added language to their QAP that allows the board discretion as to how, to, how strictly to follow the point system. So if there are plans that meet the needs of the community, and have already been approved prior to the changes, um, then they'll go ahead and have discretion to approve those, even though we might not need the points. They're still not changing their focus on affordable housing, but what they're doing is allowing for the board to have some discretion as to which projects move forward and which don't. There are a bunch of uh, senior housing projects that were in the pipeline prior to the change in policy. And those projects are currently in the pipeline and we cannot move forward. So in order to get those 
and this includes our project. In order to get those projects moving forward, they need to um, get them approved somehow. And you, and you think from your consultants, and I know checking into it, that we could be, hopefully, I know there's no guarantees of anything, we know that, but in that group. Uh, through informal conversations with the OH, we can advise to move forward. So uh, we will, you know, if we get approval tonight, we will go ahead and formalize our conversations with them. We will have them hopefully in the next two to four weeks to sit down with them and formally go over the budget, the uh, plans, and, um, you know, get the green light for them to go ahead and file the application. If, this, is, this is on the Knights of Columbus property. We're sticking with that, right? That's correct. So there's been some discussion about sites downtown and maybe doing a swap. So we've, we've discussed some stuff with the developers. We've just discussed some stuff with DOH relative to that. Um, any site downtown that's close to a train station would require it to be a either affordable housing project or a workforce housing project that's affordable as well. Um, they, the DOH probably would not fund a similar restricted project in that area only because of the amount of money they've invested in the trains um, and they're looking to have a stick to the plan they've come up with for that corridor um and that's workforce type housing or you know a mix of market rate affordable type housing uh so there we probably wouldn't get funded for a senior housing project downtown uh the project at knights of columbus affords us 50 units of affordable housing and again um let me just reference the affordability. So we have six units of senior housing at 30% of the median income, 20 units at 50% of the median income, 16 units at 60% of the median income, and eight units at 80% of the median income. So all the, all the seniors, I believe, would be able to qualify for those units. If we went with a private developer um, to, you know, sold that to a private developer to have him develop it, it would be a market rate concept, so all the units would be market rate, maybe with one or two or three units being the affordable section. So I think we need to exhaust the options we have on the table now with DOH and CHFA, and at that point, if those are exhausted and we can't move forward, then we'll you know, change plans. But at this point, I think the best option to add the largest amount of inventory to the senior housing stock is to move forward with the plan that we have on the table now. Yeah, I know that's always been our wish to get senior housing, more senior housing in Berlin, because we have a wait list, right? Uh, for we, do have, we do have a wait list. And uh, we people on the wait list now, I'm sure if we do this, uh, the wait list will quickly expand because they're new units and they're a little bit larger than what we have in our current inventory. So, all right. I mean, you know, we've been through a lot of roadblocks, unfortunately, most of them not self-imposed by us, but by different programs and budgets and things from the state and easements and just a whole host of problems over the last few years, which has been unfortunate. But hopefully it seems like maybe the tide has changed, so perhaps it's uh, time to give it one more. We have a window of opportunity, so we need to act on that window. Uh, Council, yes, Joe, it's, it's Council Gernaga. Just a quick question: the list that that this project will be taking from to you know to to put people in the units is it solely people from Berlin, or does it include other communities too? No, under fair housing law, we cannot restrict uh, any occupancies to Berlin residents. Uh, so we will post, and those occupancies will become available. Um, as any other housing project would be required to open up to any resident of the United States for that matter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? Council? Joe, um, uh, Joanne here. Yes. How, how large is our wait list? 
Okay, so the way the waitlist process works is each project. So we have two projects right now in our inventory. That's Marjorie Moore and that's uh, Principal Heights. Each project has a wait list. Um, those wait lists are open and closed at various different intervals based on the amount of people on that list. In order to move into, say, um, Marjorie Moore, we have to meet certain requirements based on income and assets. Uh, the same applies to uh, the Percival Heights project. Percival Heights project is a state funded project, whereas the Marjorie Moore project is a Section 8 project by the federal um, HUD, uh, Housing and Urban Development Department. So we get a subsidy from HUD to make, uh, manage Marjorie Moore, and they have certain requirements as to how the wait list is supposed to be operated. Normally what happens is when we open it up, we open up for a period of 30 to 60 days. Uh, we get applicants to come in, we staff the wait list, we hold a lottery, and we determine ranking on the wait list. And then as units become available, we approach the wait list in order of ranking and give those individuals an opportunity to take a vacant unit. If they decline, they move to the back of the list and it goes on to the next person in line. I hope that answered your question. Can you fix that? And all the counselors, any questions? Later. Okay. So, <laughs> you're looking for the really applications due in November? Yes. I mean, I think at this point, if we go through November with the option, we'll know in November if we move forward or not. If we move forward, then you know we can request another extension in November to the award period. We'll have a better idea of when that's going to be in November to make application. Um, if by November we haven't made application, then I'll be in front of you telling you that the deal is dead and you got to move on. Okay, so uh, yeah, so I, I mean, we, we'll go ahead and uh, take a motion on this. Uh, extend the option to November. That seems to be the consensus. So let's go ahead and put a motion on. Okay, Council Luddy here. I move to authorize the town manager to extend the option agreement between the town and the Housing Authority, currently set to expire on July 31st, 2020, out to a date in November of 2020. Second. Can we make it end of November just uh, for clar clarification purposes? Because I'm not sure when exactly in November they're going to open the application. So. Um, normally it's around the 15th, but. End of November? It's okay. okay. Amended to the end of November? November, fine, say day, November 30th. That's fine. Sorry about interrupting. No, that's okay. So, some amended uh, motion and a second. Second. All right, thank you. So, we've got a lot of discussion. Talked this, about this a lot, and I hope we can. Give it one last try and uh, get this done for, you know, seniors that need help. You know, whether we understand whether they're in Burlington or not, but we're happy to bring the Burlington if we can. So, any comments or questions? If not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. All right. Thank you, Council. I appreciate it. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Uh, it's an item number three. So this is uh, requesting to waive the requirement on the quality assurance processes uh, in the DNA. So to give you a little background, uh, Wendy's on the line with this. This is uh, something that we have been giving to an outside organization who cost us about $30,000 and request came to the town manager's office to extend it for three years and the rates are much higher. And I had a conversation with Wendy um, on that we should be actually getting this out. So since, you know, the option was to renew it for three years or pay an even higher amount for one year. So I spoke with Wendy and, and we can internally for about $10,000 specific guidelines that we need to follow. And it, fairly black and white. So I would rather do that, save $20,000 plus, 
and then put it out to bid middle of the year, get somebody else. Right. So, Wendy, if you're on the line, uh, think you are, would you want to comment on it and offer any clarity, guidance? I'm going to unmute everyone because if Wendy, this may not be. Yeah. So, I'm unmuting everyone. Wendy, are you there? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> Okay, um, basically, just as the road said, I have a, we have a contract, uh, we have a contract with this outside agency, uh, pretty much on the, the um, contract is for three years, the two year option following. Um, for the first year, it's, you know, it's set at 28,000, goes up in five hundred dollar increments every year, leaving us um, for the last two years, 30 at $30,000. Um, you know, because our budget is tight, um, our um, census is low related to the pandemic. Um, we felt that this would be a good option being that it was our year to renew the contract to just kind of put it on hold, um, bring the bring the process internally. Um, I have done quality assurance in the past. Uh, I can do the, it's required uh, quarterly auditing and quarterly reporting with an annual report at the end of the fiscal year. And that's required by, um, by the state right. Um I have done it in the past. I can uh, bring it internally and I can do it, especially um, you know, during this time and, you know, save the, uh, save the town some money on that. And, um, hopefully, you know, next year, uh, we have a better year and we can look at then putting out the bid for, um, the services again. Uh, we'll re uh, Arosh and I agreed to relook at it in January, um, for the next fiscal year. Okay. So, Wendy, you're auditing yourself, understandable, or your organization, um, your department. Um, so, that goes to the state. Go ahead. Yes, it's a requirement. They um, look at it in their surveys and they get a quarterly and annual report. And many agencies do it internally. They usually have a um, you know, one person is the quality assurance director. Um, but like I said, we're a small agency. Uh, right now we're running on the low side as related to the pandemic. So um, I think it's something that I can take on additionally because I do have, you know, pretty extensive experience with it. It's just gonna be more time consuming. But I'm more than willing to do that. Okay. Uh, Okay, so no, I appreciate you coming forward with that. And I know you know your budget's tight, so if we can save uh, dollars on that, that's great. And you can, sorry, take on some extra work, Wendy, but uh, if you have you know just a little extra time to do it, that's great. And uh, you guys, so we got to revisit it in January, right? Right, right. Yeah, we'll make it work. All right. Thank you. So we'll go ahead and take a motion on this. Councilor, I get the first motion. I will uh, move to approve the transfer of eleven thousand three hundred and sixty-five dollars for the nurse professional services account, the department head account ten thousand dollars, social security account seven hundred and sixty-five dollars, account six hundred dollars to perform all the assurance process. Second on that. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 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 Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. 
Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item number four is a request uh, made for supplies books, database books, four different categories, and I have uh, Helen on the line to explain this, provide some background. You don't need to. Get on, Helen. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, this is a request we bring to you every year uh, for the new council members. Uh, we are part of a consortium called the Connecticut Library Consortium, which on our behalf um, approaches many vendors that uh, most libraries in the state use, and they get us the best discount uh, because they can bid it as a group. So. We uh, like to use all these vendors anyway, and the fact that we have the best discount that's been provided um, CLC is just uh, icing on the cake. So we ask that um, you wait for bidding procedure because the consortium has already done it for us. And these um, uh, vendors uh, supply most of our books and audiovisual materials a lot of our data services, uh, databases, and we just couldn't open the doors without uh, some of these vendors at all. So um, this is uh, very important to us and we bring it to you every year. And I think the some of the prices have gone up because every, everything is going up. Linda's going through the meeting. It is, uh, it is still uh, a very good discount that we get. Is there Okay. Thank you, Alan. Sure. Um, any other questions or comments? Okay. Council ready here. I'd move to wait to help bidding procedures and approve issuing purchase orders for the following vendors due to the library's participation in the library consortium, library connection Inc. As the best discounts have already been provided. This is in the best interest of the town. <coughs> Books from Baker and Taylor Company for children. Databases, book supplies, data services, audio visual library connection for fifty-four thousand dollars. Data services, Novus for thirteen thousand. Thank you. Second on that. Thank you. Um, any other comments or questions? Not all those in favor. <laughs> Any opposed? Yeah, he didn't want to go home. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Alan. Mm -hmm. uh, agenda item number five. Again, a uh, gentle reminder to everyone if you're on a phone or on your own device, please mute it. We hear a lot of background noise. <laughs> Can you mute everyone? And then, yeah, see. Okay. Right, sorry about that. Uh -huh. Got to get into a habit. Much, much better this way. So, agenda <laughs> item number five is a contract for miscellaneous concrete sidewalks, and I uh, have Mike Hearn to give you some background information on this. Mike, uh, you're done muting. I had to unmute everybody because I don't think I'm. Yeah. Mike. All right. Am I uh, am I being heard? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Excellent. Um, yeah. This uh, Mike Ahern, Public Works Director. We do this um, unit price contract every few years. The previous one ran out. And this is to repair and also construct sidewalks in town. We have uh, miles and miles of sidewalks to maintain. So we found the easiest way is to have a unit price approach. We put this out to bid. We received six bids. Um, as noted in your packets, the lowest bidder missed um, two proposal items. He, he didn't put two unit costs in, so he was dismissed. The second bidder put the wrong number in and when I ran the numbers it was like a $39,000 uh, jump in his price so we're recommending that William Layden who was the third apparent bidder 
um, be selected as the lowest responsive bidder at uh, 94,930. Um, this bid will run, this contract will run to the end of next year, so that's December 2021. And this contract can be used by any other department in town, including the Board of Ed. And I think it's helpful for them because they have sidewalk issues pop up and it's nice to be able to have a contract to go out and do a stretch based on unit cost versus bidding, bidding every little bit out. So that's our request. Okay, hey, thank you, Mike. Uh, any questions? come every year with this, uh, this request. New England Geosystems has maintained the uh, town's geographic information system, which we all call a GIS, on the town website for many years. They've actually set up the search engines, the uh, hosting, and also they've done projects for all of our departments uh, pretty much. So this is, they've kept their prices the same. The $30,000 request, the um, hosting part of that is 6000 and in your packets, it shows what um, the various departments, engineering, economic development, planning and zoning, the assessor's office, and the water and sanitary, um, you know, building water control also uses uh, New England Geo for specific projects. So we're basically requesting this to be renewed um, for the same price as last year. And they typically do not go over 30. And sometimes they'll leave a little money on the table too for us, which is, which is nice. So that's the request. Thank you. All right, any questions for Mike? Since you're hearing none, I'll go ahead and take a motion. Okay. We move to waive the bidding procedure and award a contract for GIS annual maintenance and departmental services to Global Geosystems in Middletown, Connecticut. Amount not to exceed thirty thousand dollars. This is in the best interest of the town. Second. Thank you very much. Any other comments or questions from the council? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Aye. Agenda item number seven is the request to authorize the finance director to file for COVID-19 claims. Kevin Delaney, our finance director is on the line. Uh, good evening, it's Kevin Delaney. Um, uh, Berlin, like, every other community and everyone else has been dealing with the coronavirus. And in response to that, the federal government made a number of programs available. One of those programs that the town is able to participate in is the Coronavirus Relief Fund. Um, the stipulation through the state to participate in this is to have the legislative body of the town authorize the CFO of the town to submit for reimbursement, and that's what this request is for, is just to give me the authority to file. Okay. Uh, any questions for Kevin? I think it's uh, self-explanatory, right? To get some reimbursements or expenses that we have incurred. So we'll go ahead and take a motion on this. Sure. Here, I move to authorize the finance director to file claims for reimbursement for general government and board of education for COVID 19 related expenses as permitted under federal and state programs, federal emergency management agency, and the state of Connecticut Office of Policy and Management, coronavirus relief. Thank you. Second on that. Second. Thank you very much. Any other uh, comments or questions for Kevin, Council? 
so pretty successful. Um, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries. Carries. Thank you. And I remember it is uh, your end uh, budget transfers of the four hundred accounts, Kevin. Uh, good evening. This is typical of what we have at the end of the budget process. We're required by charter to have every account on the general government side of the budget at zero or positive. So to the extent any of our individual account lines exceed the budget during the year, we make transfers within the budget to bring them up to at least zero. Um, they're outlined on the spreadsheet here. They're, they're pretty um, straightforward items. Uh, totals 44,808. Uh, I expect to have um, another small batch at the next meeting as we are closing out the year with payroll and final expenses over the next week and a half. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Housekeeping things at the end of the budget here as we do every year. So, then take on the tennis. Sure. Move to transfer $44,808 as detailed on the spreadsheet to cover higher than budgeted expenditures and identified accounts. Thank you. Check on that. Second. Thank you. Any other uh, comments or questions from the council? None on the floor. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Then item number nine is an increase of purchase order services. Thanks a lot. On the line. Good evening. Hi, Doug. Hi, Doug. How are you? Yeah, we just had a we had a few extra repairs done this year um, based on some weather related incidents that um, got our PO up exceeded over our threshold. So we're just asking for increase to cover some outstanding invoices. All right, go ahead and take a motion. We move to waive the town's bidding procedures and authorize the town manager to increase purchase order two zero zero four three nine. Greenwood Services in Rutherford, Massachusetts, for a lot not to exceed $25,000 for the fiscal year 2019 2020, as this is the best of the time. Thank you. Second on that. Second. Thank you. Uh, any comments or questions? Council, hearing none. Uh, motion on the floor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Here. Uh, any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Thank you. And item number 10 is uh, authorization for the town manager to sign amendments to the street plan, plan contract for the Boulevard project. Chris Edge. Thank you, Rosha. Um, yes, essentially what with the Boulevard, we had received a grant back in 2015 for the Boulevard. Since then, we have taken various pieces of different grants and essentially, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Sorry, I, somebody disappeared. I thought I lost you guys. Um, essentially, what this is doing is taking where we are now, which is about $800,000 in the state grants, creating a new agreement, essentially allowing the town manager to sign it on behalf of the town so we can move forward on the construction of the boulevard. Okay. Okay, take a motion on this. Okay, and move to authorize the town manager to apply for the state financial assistance with about that to exceed $836,014.21 Boulevard to the train station project to execute a such application with the Connecticut Department of Economic and Community Development to provide such additional information to execute such other documents that is legally required to execute an assistance agreement with the state of Connecticut for state financial assistance. Such an agreement is offered to execute any amendments, decisions, or revisions thereto act as the authorized representative for attached resolution subject to the new approval of appropriation council. Thank you. Uh, second on that. Any uh, comments or questions from the council? Vote on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks. 
Then item number 11, uh, section 824 Rudd Road, the Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, related to the boulevard. Chris, you have this too. Yes. Uh, thank you, Tom Manager. Uh, yes, uh, there's a piece at the back end of 889 Farmington Avenue that continues to the train station. It is a piece that's currently owned by DOT. Um, we're looking to just get their approval to uh, construct a portion of Boulevard. At this point, I'm not sure if it's going to be an easement or a license, but essentially due to state statute 8-24, sending it to planning zoning for their overview. Um, and then hopefully if they approve it, it'll come back to you. Um, just essentially working on this. It's an important piece in connecting our Boulevard train station. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Um, Anything to get this thing moving, so we'll take a motion on this. Okay. We move to refer the obtaining of an easement for a license from the Connecticut Department of Transportation to the Boulevard project for a review by the Planning and Zoning Commission to section 824 of the Connecticut General Statutes. Thank you. Uh, second. Second. Thank you. Uh, motion on the floor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Thank you. Item number 12, another section 824 referral to the Planning and Zoning Commission to add new schools to Eversource for the Boulevard Park. Right. We will, as, as you can tell, we, we are keeping both the Town Council and Planning and Zoning very busy on easements with our new project. Um, this one essentially is an easement to Eversource in order to provide power to the Steel Center development. With lovely development, similar to the last town council item, setting it to planning and zoning for their blessing. And back to you. Okay. Uh, power is important for the project. Uh, we're going to take a motion on that. We move to approve the granting of the easement and supply electricity to the Boulevard project into the Steel Center at Farmington Avenue for a review by Planning and Zoning Commission pursuant to Section 24 of the General Statutes. Thank you. Second on that. Second. Charlie, Deputy Mayor. So, motion on the floor for electricity to our boulevard and our project. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? So moved. Let there be power. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Item yeah. number thirteen is an authorization for the right. town manager. To support the town's right of first refusal with respect to 921 Palms and Avenue, as mortgage with respect to 945 Palms and Avenue. Chris, this is yours too. Yes, I, I am busy for, for myself. Uh, yes, we've seen this before. Five Realty and Five Tour Realty own manufacturing building at 921 um, Farmington Avenue, as well as the old Labiniac building. Essentially, we uh, had a um, facade grant on the old Labiniac building. And a right of first refusal to purchase the building at 9.9 Farmington Avenue, doing a refinance. Essentially, all we're doing is putting our liens, both the bridge lien on the facade program and the right of first refusal behind the bank. We've done this before, relatively straightforward, but essentially provides the bank um, a comfort level on redoing their mortgage. Okay, motion. Okay, I move to authorize the town manager to execute the best subordination agreements pertaining to AMCO Machine and its related entities, FAF Realty LLC, and FAF Team Realty LLC, with respect to the right of first refusal to purchase 921 Farmington Avenue, according to volume 697, page 1136 of the Borough Land Records, the town's mortgage on 945 Farmington Avenue, according to volume 721. Page 1043 of the rural land record, subject to the review and approval of Corporation Council. Thank you, Brendan. Second on that. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Item number 14 the tax abatement application for the LLC. Back at you, Chris. Absolutely. Yes, so MC4 LLC is um, two others. They currently have a small barber school and barber salon in Wethersfield. Uh, they have purchased the building that was, I believe, a restaurant and, uh, as of memory, serves a very interesting club. Half 
burned down um, right near Sage Park. They purchased a building. They're going to be renovating the outside and the inside, moving their barber school there, and essentially the portion that is going to be uh, cutting hair is actually going to be training for the new barbers. Uh, the gentleman who actually apparently has some both national and international renown. Uh, apparently, if you look up MC Barber on YouTube, he's won some competitions. So nice little opportunity. They're going to invest in town. We'll be out here bring some folks so we're very very pleased to bring this forward to the council because it's a in both an eyesore and as many of the council members know quite a pain for now because what's been there has not exactly been in the best public interest at that property <laughs> yes, definitely an upgrade yeah and, and this is obviously consistent with our tax abatement policy right Yes, it is. Yes, essentially, it does fit into the tax abatement policy. The nice thing, too, is um, Planning and Zoning Commission actually added language in order for um, schools of this side of the Burlington Turnpike, vocational schools. So it was a nice addition because it will bring both taxes, people, um, and essentially we'll, we'll take this building and create vitality to it. So it very well. And we're not looking at a lot of money, but the nice thing, too, for them, the three year tax abatement is going to mean a lot. Yeah, sure. It's great to uh, bring another uh, small, small business uh, to town and uh, renovate that building. So, okay, great. Uh, go ahead and take a motion. And okay, move to approve a tax abatement for MC Barber LLC for the renovation of 1427 Burlington Turnpike. We have one point here for the town's tax abatement policy. Thank you. Uh, second. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Chris. Thank, Thank you, you so very much, Council Member. Have a great night. Thank you, too, Chris. Thanks. Agenda item number 15 is uh, a bit favor for the COT system. Madam Town Clerk, would you like to take this one? No. <laughs> <laughs> This is uh, very similar to what I had uh, come to you back in May for. Um, it, it's just the idea now. I think I'll be on the agenda every year for the waiver of the bid with COT. Um, it has to do with not only the land records, and there was an increase with that because of us going to the cloud, but also we increased the number of dog licenses that each of us had on our desks and everything. Um, and it really went beautifully in June. We did a great job on licensing dogs, the whole bit. People were phenomenal. You know, a lot of times people wanted to come in, but we encouraged them to either do it by mail or do the drop off and or the drop box. And people were great. You know, they really were. Um, so we were able to process most of our licenses very easily and quickly, and then also because of the attorney who had been doing my auditing, um, she had some medical issues and just couldn't do it. So we went to Pot and asked them to do the auditing. Is us importing or just checking? They did give us a little bit of a break as far as costs. So that's where everything kind of landed up. But this would be for fiscal year 2020. Okay, we'll have to take a motion on this. Okay, I move to waive the town's bidding procedures to allow the town clerk's office to continue using Pot Systems Inc. software for land records and dog licensing, provide maintenance, auditing services, and supplies to the office for an amount not to exceed $13,500 for fiscal year 2021. Brendan, uh, second on that. Thank you. Uh, motion on the floor, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Thank, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Ooh, that was good. So we're moving through that agenda very quickly. Wow. Well, I know we want to stay longer. Let's go ahead. You don't want to jinx it, right? Thank you, Mr. Ann. So I have a, a few items I want to uh, discuss with you and a couple of them are important. So I want to talk to you about the boulevard. We're getting all of you know, ducks lined up. Um, you know, we've got the lowest bid, but we still can't award it. Um, we 
because we don't have all of the financing pieces like that. So our plan was to have um, Newport complete their financing by end of June. And unfortunately, their bank has a backlog of application that they're processing with COVID-19 uh, paycheck. And uh, in the couple of hundreds, right? So as of when we spoke to them at the beginning of the May, beginning of June, we were looking at the July time. The latest what coming from the bank is they're looking at that August to uh, underwrite them. So I have some concerns waiting until August, which means we can really award the our contract until probably September. Everything comes on target. And remember the 836,000 or so that we have from the state uh, as a deadline, drop date deadline of December 31st, 2020. So, a few options that we have. One is uh, to reach out to the state and ask them to extend the deadline from December to June 2021, right? which, which we will do. But we, we won't also have a plan, not A, B, and C as well. So what I, what I did was I reached out to the board and asked them, so that you have to wait till August to get your finance from the bank, your balance sheet is fairly strong. How about you pay for total cash into the project, which is about 470,000 to the uh, purchase of the uh, 869913. And then remember that there's a shared cost in the boulevard, 179,000, 49,000 supposed to pay. That is pay as you go, um, the way we discussed it. So, um, import verbally, they said, you know, that that's not their preferred way to do it, but what they can do is to meet us. Meaning from the 470, they can pay 235 today if you want to close it, right? If they cash, obviously, you can the process to do that. And then the, the town sort of either appropriate the, um, you know, maybe the surplus or the fund balance until the uh, bank closes in August. Uh, it will allow us to award the contract hopefully by the end of this month. And the boulevard, the timing of that is in 120 days, there's everything goes well. I just don't want to wait till September, October to get that 120 days. You know, projects don't go always as planned. Like, there's something that's going to come up, and I, the last thing you want is to lose the state money because it is somewhat difficult. So, having said that, remember when we talked about there was an agenda item for the, the steep plan application? So half a million of that is counted with this project. There's another 336 that is not in the overall 1.3. That is, we are going to get, but not probably tomorrow, but August, September time frame, we will have that 336. So we, we would not, you know, the worst case scenario is, you know, even if I don't think this would happen, even if Newport does not get their financing, they would get the 336. So come out of cash, uh, so to say. So what, what the proposed that we do is for the 235, that we carve out 861, which is $10,000, and then the 195,000 is for 903, and just close on those two properties, not 913. 913 will be open. And then their 235 will allow them to buy those two properties, and their plan is not to wait until the work is complete as soon as we pass the 903 to, to build 903 without waiting until the work is completed. 
So what I want to introduce this to you to sort of get your uh, reaction to it. Uh, after we discuss it here, we probably want to talk to, not probably, definitely want to do that with the board of finance to start appropriate some funds um, that we need to be part of it and buy into it. And um, my, my recommendation is that we look at these all option, you know, certainly going to go to the state, but that's not totally up to us, right? I don't know what the state is thinking. This is not just our project. They have they put uh, every town I know is saying all these extensions they want to get what they want. This was pre COVID. Now the state is also a uh, little, you know, probably stretching on um, now tight on cash and they, they might go either way. And, and, and in some circumstances, with the executive orders, they've allowed some branches to sort of fund beyond their faith, more flexible. So I'm not saying they won't. Shouldn't just count on that. And and my other one is with the you know with the towns appropriate two thirty five. I'm not so worried about the cash flow aspect of it because even though Newport gets two thirty five, the very first time we can start billing the state every month to get the cash as well. Um, separately, I reached out to. And they send me a letter very nicely saying this is not to say that you know not that everything's approved or anything, but for saying Newport is one of their best customers and they've been doing this with them for a long time and good standing and uh it, just the underwriting and all that has to you know, take its own course. It's meant to this COVID-19 you know, sort of put everything um and delayed everything, otherwise they would have got all this back. Thoughts, reaction. I think it critical we move forward as soon as possible. One of the credibility we've talked about for the next few years. We have a contract on and materials are starting to get very hard. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of trouble getting, especially road buildings. So as soon as we get it in the hopper, it's hard. And I think the risk is very low. If, if yeah. the deal fell apart, we have a complete road with more than thirty-five thousand dollars in money, yeah. and we won't be out two thirty-five either. By the end of the year, we're going to get that two thirty-six. Right, because right. 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 plus we're holding a piece of property. Yeah. So there's not really yeah. any and, back. Right, the nine thirteen, you won't be selling it, so you can sell them out then to some someone else. Right. I think we have to do whatever yeah. we can to preserve this project. And I. Just my conversation with people, I, I think I've been before. They are ready to run. We're going to see as soon as the boulevard gets completed beyond 903, they're going to invest. They've already drawn up plans. They are looking for you know, tenants. They are working behind the scenes like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree. It's good. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Right, all that. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. So, uh, so put on the agenda for yeah. Me. So, what we'd yeah. like to do is to bring it formally to the next week as an agenda, and perhaps you and I can talk about how we want to do it. Thank you. So that's on the uh, uh, boulevard. Other things are fairly, uh, remember we, when we approved the, uh, adopted the budget for fiscal year 2021, we took a lot of the, all the capital out. And one of the things we had discussed was to bring um, some capital requests to you in order fiscal year 2021. 2020 surplus, projected surplus. And, and uh, the Board of Finance has indicated, which I'm fine with this, um, sort of hold off on it until we see what our revenue projections are. Um, at least with all this. But I will do a good next meeting, and then Board of Finance can decide if the revenue collection is bad 
or approve anything, but because we don't need to know this, I could get like that and get you comfortable by August 14, you can hold on. Right. At least you're not waiting for September to do some of these things. Again, a lot of these things are taking much longer now. Your point, um, even if you want to buy it today, just do it. So just just FYI. I mean, by the so by the next our next meeting now we won't really you know. Won't know. We won't know what tax. So you could you could have I'm assuming you could have a um, that could be subject to. Oh. And, and keep the collection of our collection because they have a meeting in August. They have a meeting in August 4. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a way to see. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, right? I mean, it's un unknown times here. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah no, let them, them. If we're okay with it, let them. Yeah, right. Yeah. We send it to the two different no, no. Yeah. I think either way, it's probably fine. Right? Spending. I'm guessing will be lower, but we don't know. You don't know like anybody knows. So far, it's coming in well, though. It's just a right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's early. It's early. It's early. But money is coming in. Money is coming in. <laughs> That's a good thing. It's good. Um, so, as you know, uh, moving on to the money, uh, town hall is by appointment only, but they're both for the revenue collected. Right. So, that those are open during business hours. They can come in. We have had full markings for social distancing and telling people to wear a mask and you know and my so much staff that that's not make it difficult for people to drive, um, you know pay our salaries right people yeah. are not uh, customer some, service yeah some are not what. really about it but no they haven't they it has worked out well so far i'm, I'm actually I, I speculated this hey you probably remember that most people, we're going to see fewer people coming in in person this time. Fewer. Yeah, it's yeah. Like out the door like crazy. You're like 50 people coming every once in a while. So I think a lot of these, you told them they could go and see all the But it's early now. It's, it's early. always the two days before it's due that everybody, but also me included, I'm standing there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Drop it in the mail. Yeah. You know, we send an envelope. I like coming in. I know. And then also you can people can use your own bank for the yeah. it doesn't cost you anything. So but but it's well a lot of people mm -hmm. like to pay the tax in cash. Yeah. And, uh, not like a receipt. So just fine. We will rather take it. They don't trust the town, what the receipt. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Gotta have the receipt. And um I mentioned last time the library open. So, um, yeah, the lobby is open now, and um, I, I'm going to forward you a video that Helen and her staff did. It's it's real. It's good. So this is that one they posted on Facebook? with the dinosaur. Did you see yeah, that? It's, yeah. oh, it's really fun. So the lobby is yeah. open. What are you going like? Yeah. Pick, pick, pick a, so I think it's, it's still by appointment, oh. only so that they can accommodate all the thing and all that. But I had people have forwarded me to residents to. I hope you know that the library staff is great and um, you know they have accommodated all the press and because people can go online and call and order whatever they want and get you know, bags and pick it up. So again, just like the restaurant, that's just because they're open, not many people are actually crazy about coming inside. They would rather get stuff from outside and go if you can provide that service. So I've had a lot of good kill you experience this too. And people have been really um, supportive and uh, understanding and uh, every once in a while we have people maybe almost at World War Three, but um, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you know. It's always a few. Yeah, it's always a few. It keeps it uh, interesting. Uh, finally, I, I, I just handed out uh, I'll manage uh, there's a template, one that I filled out and I, I had a write up. So, Mr. May, I think all of you are going to fill this out yeah. either by paper or online. Yeah. Or get, and then give it to you. Is that how it works? Uh, I'll give today. Yeah, uh, I forgot. Uh, last I think in the past, it's 
Yeah, yeah Denise, okay. I, I think we have Denise filing. Then you, she does it like on the record. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll, we'll get it to her before the next council meeting, right? Yes. Yeah. That would be good. Right? Is that good? There's a good report to, to Denise before, you know, give her a few days to file. Uh, you, you want to set a deadline for people to get back? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so. It's, it's a, <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, first, right? Yeah. We want to get it to her within a week. Yeah, we come to 14th the 14th or 15th or something like a week. Yeah. 14th or 15th, drop dead 15th. So, I will get it to the, she's in, right? She's, she's in. We're yeah. on vacation. No, just like okay, all right. Well, good. So, yeah, so 14, 15, very latest 15. So, give her some time to file it, pilot, and then we'll have and then we can have an executive session, <coughs> right? For the, uh, yes, for the next meeting and talk about it with yourself. Yes, yeah. thank you. That's all I have. Okay, okay. Thank you. Oh, I mean, the pools are open, right? It's open. Good. And uh, how are we doing? And and first of all, right. just first of all, yeah. And then, uh, you know, if has been increased. I, I honestly don't know. Yeah, I think it's about 50, it reduced to 50 35. Less than 50? 50 to 35. 35? Yeah. Are they over people? I don't know. Again. I guess maybe it's just more manageable. <laughs> So we should find out. Oh, uh, 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 I don't necessarily need to No, I might not be done. But I mean, I'd like to know because I haven't seen or heard anything about it, so I was just wondering. The first hour? Oh, okay. People know, right? Is it out there on the town website? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Th yeah. I mean, right. they're open. I mean, but if you could just see what. Yeah, I'll find out. But about the and how's it? How's it going? Right. Okay. Managing okay. Yeah. Good I could tell you that things are things are not good all. Yeah. yeah so sure. probably. <laughs> Have you heard anything about the basketball courts? Yeah, so we, we're going to put something out. So it's it's a odd thing, you know, like people complain that you don't buy a football court. Now people are complaining that there are too many people in there. I'm saying not everyone. Yeah. But folks who are not from bowling in there. Yeah. And it's filthy. The trash cans are full. So we're putting something up tomorrow on the Facebook page saying, please, you know, the door, the door. But we have sending people to remove it and all. Can we move? Really? Oh, yeah, we have so, so, yeah, on the board. Yeah. But it's just like, about people throwing empty water bottles all over the place. Wow. Just kids, right? Yeah. So it, there's a little bit of noise there from yeah. residents who walk walks and they don't like what they see. Uh, so they're trying to just send us like, a you know, message. Is it the high school course? All schools. Yeah. All of them. the high school. High school is the one that is probably uh, issue that well, people. Don't know. I mean, I would think, wouldn't we? I don't, and I don't know how. I mean, I guess we leave it up to parking rack or parking rack. But should we limit? I mean, we're limiting the pools. Would yeah. we kind of so we don't have staff there? So who's going to manage? Who's going to monitor? Oh yeah. Well, somebody from the parking racks could maybe stop by there several times a day. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Discuss it and see. I mean, if we're limiting other areas, maybe we need to. Because I, I mean, you know, my son used to play there a lot, and I, I can see it getting out of control easily. Even in the old days when there was no problem, there was a ton of people there. Yeah, so. right. You could have someone do around for that. In part, right? Yeah. Could they, yeah, maybe twice a day, just. To share that, or just I mean, what's it going to take? It's probably at night or I don't know. Yeah, it probably could be in the evening. It should be. You know, I don't want to have issues there. Are there lights no. there? Uh, there were lights. Yeah, there was light. 
Yeah, so I don't know. If, if you figure out a brochure, if there's any things to just monitor yeah, it's it. yeah. if it's out of control, maybe I, I don't I don't know how we would limit it, but well, yeah, I maybe mean, well, I don't know. What's school security doing during the summer? I are doing now shut they around if they off. Well, I'm, but, you know, I'm not sure again, like you the day. No, it may not be so within there. You can find out. I'll well, it's on school property. I don't know. I mean, check it out. Hey, Jeff? Yeah. So, just out, just out of curiosity, so the basketball courts, I mean, they're town courts, but they're on high school property. Like school resource officers, they're at school, they're working now. Could they monitor that something within their purview? We have to look at the contract, or what do you think about that? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, I mean, it's within their purview. It's a school facility. I think so. I mean, I don't know what their contract says in terms of what right. the obligations are with respect to athletic, outdoor athletic facilities. But, right. I mean, just a thought. I don't, I don't, I have no idea. Right. If but they're there, if they're there, I mean, I don't know if they're there. Oh, yeah. I mean, if there's something, if they see a presence there, maybe yeah. keep. I mean, just, I mean, they could even look from the distance if it's not that crowded out. Yeah, right. Like we see a ton of people right, throwing trash everywhere and say, hey, you know, maybe we, I don't, again, I don't know how you limit the amount, but we're limiting everything else. So, another problem for you, town manager, Mr. Town Manager. Another just small <laughs> headache, just very small. Not bad. Not bad. Appreciate it. Okay, so we're all set. Uh, special community reports, there have been nothing. Special committees, right? Nothing. No, due to our COVID-19 issues everywhere. Council uh, communication. I wanted to bring up something. So, it's kind of around people are agreeable to it. I thought that uh, maybe next week we could examine population and um, buy a gay pride flag here at the town hall, at the very least, um, maybe even have a ceremony for the initial raising of that flag, just acknowledge our, our LGBTQ population and it's high school and um, yeah, I thought it was uh, something uh, nice to do. That's for on the June. Yes, that right. Yes, yes. But yeah, I thought it would be nice. I mean, I'd like to even see like flags down Farmington Ave just for the moment. But um, I suspect you know, we want to see what Fox was. But at the very least, I'd love to see one here in town hall. And like I said, the, the ceremony, you know, raising. Yeah. So, Next year, well, I mean, yeah. uh, right. June, right? June, June is Um, so but I think it's important that so yeah, and the kids at high school you know that they're supported and acknowledged. <laughs> One that's fun. so fireworks complaints. I have a heck of a email that I don't know. I mean, there's a bunch of fireworks on the board. I don't have any problems with anybody. I think it's awesome. Yeah, I saw awesome. it. It was pretty good. Yeah, I put one from a fire marshal that somebody in their backyard. It's sort of damaged. Oh, it's going to go. Oh, it's I had a couple of emails. Some people I said, Well, the police department did the best they can. And if there's a problem, call. call. So people are using their backyard. And they, they did. This one, one person just said, You know, heard a lot of them around the neighborhood, you know, very noisy, legal. So what we're doing. Yeah, 